everybody. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist and we are coming to you from our Tipsy Artist Paint Palace in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Also the beautiful home of the Utopia Joe Steampunk Surf Shop. Say that ten times fast. All right, so what we're gonna do today, we are doing ta -da, a lovely teepee. I'm gonna show you the model here too. Okay, so here is my model. So this is Love My Tribe, and it's a gorgeous um, teepee and a little arrow coming through. We've got some awesome shiplap happening in the background. And we have all of this, if you are not able to get out right now, uh, you can paint it home with me. And so we've got templates for sale online, canvas, paint, brushes, um, everything that you need. Now uh, we do have, we always paint in a larger size and then sometimes we just have the 11 by 14 for sale online but um, we, we've got all the supplies you need to be able to paint at home and you can just have those shipped to you and then of course all of the instruction that you receive is always free on YouTube. So yay! Alright so that's awesome. Alright so that is our model. I'm going to be peeking at it over here and then I'm going to be doing it step by step here. All right, so let me talk about, uh, we've got my brushes with me and my water. Then I've got um, rag or paper towels and, of course, my lovely paint. All right, so I'm going to get started with my background here first. And I'm going to be doing a neutral background, quite lovely, with a lot of white and some gold and some black. And I'm going to go ahead and use a pretty big brush for this, but anything uh, in this size range works just like that. Okay, so we've got white, gold, black, and I have mine lined out with Sharpie. And I highly recommend that for you. So when you order our templates online, um, you can actually take everything, trace it out, and this is a beautiful thing. I do this all the time in my shows. It's kind of a little trade secret, which I'm now sharing with you. So when you apply paint over this, it actually will peek through the paint. So that, I think, is awesome. So it still gives you this faint line so you can sweep through and make those lovely designs. And then we're going to come back in and do the work that comes in over the top. So it's a really good cheat, really great time saver. All right, so I've got big dollop of white and then some black and then some gold just using basic student grade acrylic paint here. I'm gonna go ahead and take just a teeny amount of the black, super tiny amount there, push that into the white. Also uh, a little amount of the gold there. I'm gonna mix all this together. And this is gonna give me just a really pretty warm kind of a taupe color here. So again, lots of white, little bit of black. So that black mixes with the white gives me an awesome gray and then a little bit of that gold kind of warms it up to that taupe color. So I'm going to start pushing a little bit of this around on my canvas here. And then what I'm going to start to do is just sweep it on to the background. So I'm just going to sweep it on back and forth. This paint has really good coverage, um, especially anything with a lot of white pigment in it always has really great coverage. So that's a nice thing. So you don't have to worry too much about how you hold the brush. You can just hold it just like you'd hold a pencil. Come with the canvas just straight forward. This is a very therapeutic process where you can just sweep that paint on back and forth. And I like to come back in with a lot more of the white too. Just pure white helps lighten and brighten it up. Also just makes some really beautiful highlights as it pushes through the background here. And then I'm just going to take this all the way through, all the way through. You notice I'm covering up my design, that's okay. I'm just going to push it back and forth, and then I'm going to take it all the way up to the top. Okay, so now we're going to let this set up and dry a little bit and then you'll notice that as the paint dries you're going to see a lot of that uh, sharpie line work that we did it's really going to pull through with a lot of peekaboo effect all right so again 
a little bit of dry time. It's going to be amazing. This is a great time to relax, have fun, let it dry, and then we're going to come back in. We're going to do all of our solid shapes over the top. All right, welcome back. Okay, so this is lovely and dry. I put it by my heater today and it is now beautiful. And you can see how it looked like it was all going to be covered up. I'm going to actually bring this a little closer. But see that? You can see how you can see that really faint line peeking through. And it definitely gives you a guide and it's just wonderful. So that all really popped out. You know, as the paint dries, that, that line will pop back out at you. So I actually don't have to come back in at all to do any tracing. And so that made all of that background painting super just <sighs> relaxing. And we all need as much of that as possible right now. So just, you know, calm, relaxed, just cheerful and painting. All right, so now what we are going to do is we're going to start to paint into the solid shape. So I call this color blocking. So we do color blocking, which is just painting in this very simple step, no details yet, no pattern work, and then just, you know, color blocking into those solid shapes. All right, so here we go. Big dollop of the white, all right, and then just a teeny touch of the black. So big dollop of white, teeny touch of the black. Actually, let me use this plate over here. It's easier. Just a little touch into that, and that gives me that really pretty light gray. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint into the teepee shape, because I just want that to be a really pretty light gray color. So, and because it's a cooler shape, or a cooler shade rather, it will just have a nice, really nice contrast over the top. And I am looking for these. They're awesome. All right, so. Here we go. I gotta see what I'm doing. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and line this out. Push in that light, cool gray into this shape here. And I'm gonna come back in this line that comes through here. I'll be able to do a hard line over that here in a moment. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give it full coverage at this point. So, just keep this really easy and light. Again, this is just a light gray color. Mostly white, little tiny amount of the black. Alright, so those little lines that came in here, I can still see that faint line peeking through, so I am going to just add a little tiny touch of the black, kind of make this a little bit of a darker charcoal color, and I'm going to use the line edge of the brush, and then I'm going to go ahead and just push this in right here over the top, and I get a nice soft blend on that. That's a really pretty look right there. All the way to the corner. All right, nice. Uh, my next step will be to go ahead and do the solid color into the arrow. All right, so I'm going to come in with a smaller brush. This is a smaller shape in here. I need a little bit more precision, and I'm going to mix up a beautiful charcoal gray. So I want that darker color in here. I have my little buddy brush. He's got a little flat top and he is just awesome. He is a great helper. So I've got my black and a little bit of white. Mix these two together here. So that's my dark charcoal gray. It's wonderful. All right, so here we go. <laughs> So anything that is dark, you want to make sure it's got plenty of setup time. You don't want to come in next to it with any 
bright colors because you're going to get a blend with that and it'll muddy down any bright vibrant color that you want. So I'm going to leave all those areas alone. Then I'm going to I'm going to start to work in some of those other color blocking areas into areas where I don't have to worry about darker color nearby that might still be wet. So I'm going to work on this heart next and I'm going to come in. I like little buddy again. Where are my brushes? All right, here we go. Moving stuff around here. I get lost where things are. All right, so I've got my red and little buddy. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and push into that. Red can be a little bit challenging in that it is very uh, translucent. In fact, a, a helpful little hint if you are painting anything red. For the most part, my suggestion would be to do an undercoat of something. So, uh, fun fact, you know, if you were doing your cabinets red in your kitchen, which I have done before, um, you want to make sure that you do an undercoat of gray. Always have to do that or else you will have hot pink transparent cabinets for days. So that advice is free all day long but that was one of my really hard lessons that I learned. Not fun. Alright so you can see here like if I paint like this you can see how translucent that is. We can also use technique here that will help give you good coverage over the canvas. So I'm going to talk about that. You know, or if you're really patient and you want to do undercoats of something, an undercoat of gray is also a beautiful thing. Um, we do have this nice undercoat of a taupe color working for us, so that's good. Um, but I'm going to show you more technique here to get a good coat of red over the top. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold the brush just like a pencil at first here. This will give me a lot of control to make that line edge around that shape. So I'm going to go ahead and just work that in first. Just get the, I'm going to concentrate on just getting the shape done. Then I'm going to go ahead and do my first coat here of just filling this in, just like that. All right, now what you'll see up close, a lot of brush strokes, a lot of transparency. So now what we do is we make sure we have a nice layer of paint on one flat side of the brush. And then we just go ahead and hold this out to the side. So, and that's, that sometimes is tricky for people. Um, I don't know, they just, let me show you what I see a lot with beginners. This is what they do. I tell them, parallel to the canvas, just like this. And then they go, okay, you know, and it's still not. Do you see how that handle's coming out towards them? And they're really not hitting on the, flat side of the brush, the side of the brush. So very different. So let me give you my profile view, okay? So flat side of the brush, parallel to the canvas. So it feels weird, but you wanna just hold it just like this. And then I'm gonna turn and face you. So again, instead of like this, handle coming towards me, lots of brush strokes, really translucent. Now what you wanna do is flat side of the brush facing the canvas. And this is a good trick for any time you're struggling with transparency on the canvas. Just make sure and hold that brush out to the side. This gives you really thick, opaque coats of paint over the top. Quite lovely. All right, so that's what we're going to do now when we work into our part here. All right, so we gotta, we're going to lay that brush over on the side. So now I'm just seeing lots of beautiful, bold uh, red, just boom, just pop right over the top. It's awesome. All right, so I'm going to keep pushing this in. All right, so we have our lovely little heart. We have our arrow in here. Um, this is now dry. That's awesome because now I am super jonesing to get my base down for my roses. So roses at this stage are still very, very simple. I'm going to do like a, a fun little pink rose to begin with. So a little bit of white, a little bit of red, push that in, and then I'm going to go ahead and just paint in what looks like lumpy circles to start. These are tiny little roses. And these circles do not have to be perfect. In fact, you don't want them to be perfect. You want them to be a little bit, you know, lumpy. And that's actually very easy for everybody to do. And then I'm going to do a third one over here. So again, little lumpy circle. There's my little base there. And again, little lumpy circle. All right. 
So that's my base on that. And I'm going to let that just set up and dry a little bit too. And then I'm going to teach you how to come back in over the top with our pattern work here in a little bit. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to bring in some beautiful color over here on the side. And I still need my smaller little buddy brush. Okay, and we've got some really, this is a fun look over here. This is going to be kind of a, a nice um, Serapi look, which is really trending, you know, has been trending for a while now. Uh, so we're just going to bring in some of those bright, vibrant colors, uh, which will be like a red and a mustard and a beautiful turquoise color. Um, so without further ado, let us mix up some turquoise. So we've got, I love this color, um, very versatile, wide range of, you know, just lights and darks that can make it extraordinary. Um, so we've got our dollop of our white here, dollop of our blue, and then dollop of our green. So if you go equal parts, you're going to get a pretty solid, just basic turquoise color. See that? My paint's kind of going... All right, that's okay. So I can't do that for very long. All right, but now I'm going to add a little bit more white. I'm going to take it this way so it can roll a different direction. All right, so now I've got more of like a beautiful like sea foam color that's happening here. Really pretty. All right, and then if you want to add more green to it over here, see, then that gives you this really awesome like a uh, teal color. So it's, it's beautiful. All right, so big wide ranges of color happening. Um, I am going to just start to push in. I'm going to start with my turquoise here, the one kind of just right in the middle. Here's a little bit. This is the tiniest brush that I've got. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little twist into the paint. So I'm taking this brush, little twist here that will load it up, twist it into a nice, beautiful, fine point. All right, and then I'm going to make little leaves here. And the way to do a leaf, actually, let me show you here on a plate. So make it real big so you see the technique. All right, so what we're going to do is a parentheses and then another parentheses those connect and then that makes your leaf shape and then you can go ahead and just fill that in all right and then we can make a little small one nearby as this little neighbor all right and again just same stroke just parentheses parentheses fill that in all right there's your beautiful little leaves right there awesome This is looking really good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we, we're going to do turquoise accents. All right, so I'm going to take my little bit here, and then I'm going to do a little soft line. Just boom. All right, you can also take a little bit of white at the same time, soften that up. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white. And do a soft blend with the white and the turquoise. So really pretty little accent there. Um, same thing here again on this other side. Little line of turquoise to begin with. All right, and then I'm going to soften it up now. So I'm going to come back in with the same brush, a little bit of white paint, and then just do a nice little overlay white over the top. All right, so really pretty little accent there. I love that. This is setting up and drying nicely. So now what I'm going to do is come in and show you some technique over the top of the roses. Now, first thing I'll do is I will show you on a plate so that it's really big and you can see the technique really well. All right, so I have... 
All right, I'm gonna show you, I've got this red over here from before, so I'm gonna do a quick little big rose here. You see how kind of awesome and sloppy that is? That is actually a perfect base for a rose. Like you just do not have to worry about perfection on this. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit brush. This is quite a bit bigger, so I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller. My little bits are kind of all over the place. i got big little bits and tiny little bits. Anyway, I like this size right here. All right, so I'm going to push in some white. And the first technique here will be to make a, you can think of your, tell your brain, keep it simple to, you know, the, the brain wants it to be simple. So we're going to think of it as a parentheses or half circle, okay, whatever works for you, but again, just kind of parentheses and then parentheses and parentheses and then just keep pushing that in in a circular pattern all the way around, work it in towards the center, okay? So you get that nice blend around and you see how it's, you've already got this really pretty rose thing. And then I've got, uh, now I'm gonna commit in with the darkest color next. Do that just red, just boom, right there in the center. There's your shadow right there in the center. And then you can work back in a little bit of that darker red just to help do a nice soft blend into the white. Okay, and then there's your beautiful like, cabbage rose. It's awesome. All right, so now we're gonna take a small We've seen the technique big, and now we're gonna go small here. So I want a much smaller little bit brush, so I'm gonna take something kinda of super teeny like that. All right, these are little liner brushes, by the way. And just to give you a visual on some liner brushes, we just, you know, they're kinda of all over the place, but um, I'm gonna go with about that size there. And then white. All right, so white first. All right, so here we go, a little bit, a little bit of white. Do that little twist, you know, so I, let me show you. Twist in between your fingertips, just like that. All right, that will give you a nice fine point. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and do those little like parentheses that I talked about, parentheses, or a little half circle, but again, just keep working that towards the middle of the rows, okay? So same thing on all of them, all right? So that big parenthesis shape, you know, and then just keep working it in towards the center. All right, same thing here. All right, now you could just leave it just the way it is, just like this. Um, but I like to come in with a little pop of a darker color in the middle and then just kind of softly around the edges again. So I'm gonna use my little bit brush again. Also make sure, um, I just kind of rinse it off, dried it off. Make sure that you always dry off your brushes really well uh, because if you do have water in your brush and then you go to make pressure on your canvas, you can get what looks like a mascara run and that's not, that's not good. So prevention, just make sure and dry off your brushes really well. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and push into this red paint here. And I want my darkest little spot of color, boom, right there in the middle. All right, and then just a little curve, those soft little half circles. All right, just kind of, just barely coming around the around those edges, okay? And just that soft blend with that white that's already on there. So it's just a really pretty look. Adds that nice little definition. So I'm going to come back in with my little bit brush again, and I want my turquoise color here. So I've got my darkest turquoise. This is a beautiful complementary color to the red. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up, and then I'm just going to make this little outline around the edge here. Okay, so now we have some line work that we need to do. 
So we've still got these raw edges happening here and then around the arrow and then of course we've got our little ship lap we've got to work in. So I'm going to come in with a, a harder line but still subtle so I want to keep it as a charcoal gray color. Alright so now oh, let's see I want um, Actually, surprisingly enough, some people are surprised by this, I actually like Big Daddy, uh, and here's why. So when you look up, when you look at him, see, there's that super tiny line edge there. So that helps me make a very thin line, which is awesome. And it's great, as long as you've got a long stretch of line to work with, you're good. So you've got like a long line here, you know, all these are pretty big areas. So you can do long lines here and here and all around. When it gets a little dicey is if the area becomes super small and you're having to cut in around really small areas. So then that's when you want to switch over to your little kiddo brushes uh, like your, um, here we go, little buddy or your little bit. That's when you want to do your more precise line work with your darker color around those. But I'm actually going to start with the charcoal color here. So. I've got my black and my white. We're going to make a little bit of a charcoal color. And then check that out. See how it's super thin on the edge? So that's awesome. All right. So I'm going to go and do a little line here. Just, you know, see how that just kind of emphasizes that uh, shiplap. All right. And then a line here. Okay, and add a little bit of white here to it. Because that's a little bit darker. And the ship lot doesn't have to be perfect either. So it's, remember, it's old weathered wood. So even if you have a little bit of a imperfection in your line, it actually just adds to that old weather wood look, so you're good on that too. All right, so it can have a little bit of a dry brush here and there. It's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and run through this, and then I'll just come back over. The other thing too is if you really can't pull off this whole straight line business, uh, remember just to get a ruler and you can actually put that ruler right up to an edge here, just like that. And you can actually just follow right along, just like that. Now, uh, before you move the ruler again to another spot, you'll want to make sure and dry it off really well because see, you've got those lines on there and that'll mark up your canvas. So just make sure and completely clean it before you move it to a different area. Alright, so that's also another little tip on the line work. So we've got our ship lap in here and I'm about to work on the rest of the line work around our TP. Here a little bit, right up next to that edge, finish that out. 
Oh, I've got this to do too. All right, so this is going to require a smaller brush in here. So nice. Okay, I may do one more thin line right in the middle and through here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, we're going to do our words. So you can freehand this or um, I know online we're going to have templates that go with some words that you can do. Uh, so we'll definitely, I know, have love on there. So that's going to be a classic, awesome one. So I'm going to go ahead and just do some freehanding, but what am I looking for here? I want a pencil. Oh yeah. All right, so here we go. Uh, I always recommend using a pencil first. So all of this is set up and dry. And then that way you can map out your word, you can, you know, you know it fits into the space, check your spelling, you know, make sure it's all good. And then you can go over it um, with either a Sharpie or paint. So Sharpie is a lot easier or a paint pen. Um, or you can go over it, you know, with paint too if you're just a real purist and you want to give that a go. So that's up to you. All right, so I'm going to start with my pencil here first. And... You know, I just freehand something on there. And you can go ahead and do the whole love, my tribe thing, or you can just do love if you want. And um, let's see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my little bit brush, black paint. All right, so I'm gonna take this brush, give it a nice little twist into that paint there. All right, there we go. And then I am going to just follow along. All right, so I showed you how to paint love, okay? And then I'm gonna show you, let's see I have a black sharpie, good job. Good job, me. Well, he's kind of warm, but he'll work. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how easy it could be if you just wanted a sharpie on words too. It's pretty awesome. Again, you can pencil first, you know, really gives you some confidence. You can look at it and go, yep, happy with that. And then you can follow along with your Sharpie or paint pen over the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and write my, you know, tribe here. So that gives you an idea of the difference. You, you can see the difference. So painted and then Sharpie and then signing your masterpiece. You can paint it on with your little bit brush or just take a Sharpie and then sign. The signature is usually always kind of long for people, so I always think it's a lot easier just to Sharpie it on. That's just me. But. All right, so part of the purpose behind what we're doing today is that I'm making this beautiful painting for my lovely, beautiful daughter, London, who is away at college. And so she's going to get this beautiful piece for her dorm room. And then also, we're making a little care package. I wanna show you the care package so that she and her friends can paint with me uh, even though they're really far away. 
So this Sabbath, we're making the best out of it. So we have lots of carbs. We have our beautiful painting kit in here. So we've got the canvas kit, the paint, the brushes. We have our template kit in here. And then of course, I'm going to put lots of beautiful swag in here with Tipsy Artist t-shirts. Okay, and then we're gonna have a little koozie. And then cute little card that says, I am valuable. Always keep it posted around, you know, to make you feel just amazing and valuable. All right, and then this little card says, find the strength to hold on, find the purpose to never let go. All right, and the author of that is Mark Devine. Way to go, Mark. Uh, so I made these cute little cards just for her in here and help her feel super duper inspired and lovely. And here we go. So we've got this beautiful care package that she's going to get in the mail along with this beautiful painting. And we're sending it her way. So yay, London. It's gonna be exciting. So we have all the stuff online. Check it out. Paint with me at home. It's going to be a beautiful experience. Great way to stay <sighs> calm, cheerful, happy, make something beautiful, and just keep that creative spirit alive. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful and blessed day. Mwah. All right, so I'm going to call my honey bear. I need technical assistance. I'm not good at all this. Hi, baby, I have you on speaker. Do you now? <laughs> you want to come down here and help me? All right, give me two seconds. Love uh -huh. you. I love you, baby. <laughs> Bye. Bye.